Hi everyone and uh, welcome to January 2023 meetup of Romania Power BI and Modern Excel user group. Thank you all for joining the first meetup of the year with another special guest today presenting to our user group. Thank you Ellen for accepting our invitation on uh, such uh, short notice and uh, I'm happy to finally have you here. Good to be here. Oh. For our newest members, my name is Christian Angel and uh, I will be your host today. The agenda for today's meetup is uh, really straightforward and after this short intro, we'll go through our next scheduled meetups. Then Alan will uh, amaze us with uh, his session. A short uh, Q&A uh, at the end, just before Ropa monthly raffle with prizes from Enterprise DNA which is our primary official sponsor. More on this a little bit later. Uh, just some, uh, my, this is my usual sl uh, slide for the meetup. In order to have a good session and a very good recording, please make sure your microphone is muted during the uh, session and uh, your camera is turned off. Type your questions or comments in the chat area. If you have a question for Alan, uh, please uh, type a Q in front of it so I can spot it easier. Uh, by the way, how do you want to treat the um, Q&A, Alan, during the session or should we end? Or should we wait until end? Um, it just said a comment saying the slides. Uh, not showing, but I can see it, so I'm not sure. Um, I don't really mind, to be honest, Christian. Um, okay. I guess it depends okay. on the question. Feel Feel free to stop me whenever if you think it's irrelevant. Okay. I'll try and keep an eye on it myself though. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you have problems with the uh, internet connection, please drop off and uh, rejoin. Uh, it's uh, Teams will be recording uh, anyway, so you're not missing much because uh, I'm recording the, the session. And, uh, Please note that the entire session is recorded and uh, your name might appear on our YouTube channel. In terms of our next meetups, uh, we will have Chandu coming on the Romania Power BI user group on February 23rd with a session on Power BI, which is pretty uh, uh, nice for me because I had to uh, choose out of his two sessions that uh, he proposed, but uh, he's doing a session with amazing tricks with Power BI tables. As long as we are a uh, Power BI and Excel user group and tables are coming from Excel, I was very curious to see what are those five amazing tricks. So uh, looking forward to his session in February. In March, on the 30th of March, we will have Reed Heavens coming uh, for our meetup with a session on how to avoid common pitfalls in uh, Power BI models and reports, lessons from the trenches. And then in uh, April, on the 27th, we will have the official initial planned uh, meetup for January with Oz du Soleil. We haven't decided yet on the topic, but uh, as uh, some of you know, uh, Oz was supposed to come in January. He couldn't come. Then Sue was supposed to come <laughs> in January. She couldn't come because she had some problems. And then Ellen uh, just saved us and uh, he's here <laughs> with a great session. Thank oh, you, yeah. Ellen, again. Whoever wants to see the, our past recordings, uh, you can go to YouTube. Uh, just go on this uh, short link on uh, ropag underscore history and you will see all our past recordings. And, uh, let's move forward. Since uh, August 2021, we have a great partnership with uh, Enterprise DNA. They became our uh, primary official sponsor. Uh, their incredible learning resources on uh, their portal is uh, just wow. And uh, they were kind enough to sponsor our uh, monthly meetups with two packages, two complete packages, membership and analyst hub uh, combo on every meetup. 
for our members that are attending our live sessions in order to win one of these uh, uh, memberships, one of the prizes, you have to uh, register for the raffle, which uh, we'll have in the end, in the end of the session. So please scan the QR code and if you don't have time to scan it, no problem. I will paste the link um, um, in the chat during the Ellen session. It's just a form that you, you have to uh, fill up and uh, say if you want to participate in the raffle or not. Even if you don't want to participate in the raffle, it's a good feedback feedback form uh, for us so we can improve future meetups. So please fill up the form during the session so we can improve uh, future meetups. Coming back to uh, the session today. Welcome again, Ellen, and uh, thanks for accepting our invitation on uh, such short notice. Our longtime members might know that uh, we were supposed to have another UK representative uh, this month presenting at Ropark, but uh, Sue could not come tomorrow as planned. So we're really happy that Ellen accepted the challenge and uh, came to present a really interesting session that anyone opening an Excel file uh, on daily basis should see. For who doesn't know Alan, he's an uh, Excel Microsoft MVP, a book author, blogger and YouTuber under the name Computer Gaga, a certified trainer since more than 20 years, I think, and uh, he's the main the man behind the London Excel meetup. Uh, he's the first man who had the courage to ask me to present a, a live session at user group and uh, back in 2021, and uh, boy, that was tough, tough, and uh, I was so nervous at the time. Mm -hmm. We know each other since uh, 2019, and uh, we've met several times face to face. Uh, last time in Bulgaria, uh, back in November, and uh, I'm really happy to meet you again, even if uh, virtually this time, Alan, and, uh, uh, I was waiting for the right timing and the opportunity to invite you and uh, this opportunity just uh, arrived and I, uh, I'm really happy to have you here. Uh, a few words about you and uh, the stage is yours, Helen. <clears throat> okay. All right, time to do some work. share an excel screen and it's working hey <laughs> it's all downhill from here <laughs> <laughs> um excellent thanks christian uh so yeah just um <clears throat> a few days notice on uh i'm kind of doing this with the the kind of poor mishaps that christian's been having you know no fault of people like these things happen you know, being a, a group owner myself, I've come across being people being sick like on the day and stuff. Uh, but the show must go on. And as Christian said, I've I've met him a few times, you know, considering him a friend. And um he's a really good guy. So uh, I, I I wanted to help out if possible and, and here I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> no uh so yeah, my session's on on formulas and um, I'm hoping there'll be a little bit of Power BI uh, engagement as well, because the idea is to look at to look at formulas. You know, everyone's kind of first love. That's what I like to think of them as. It's the first thing that made, I think, most people, yeah, fall in love with Excel and think, oh, this this is awesome. I can kind of do what I want, how I want. I'm not restricted to some like click an option next, click an option next, <laughs> that bit of software. <laughs> I can kind of get involved and get my own hands dirty. Um, and obviously things have evolved a lot since then, you know, both Excel, obviously Power BI and the rest of the data platform. Um, but formulas are moving fast too. So my session is really to see like where they fit in like the modern world, like modern Excel. Uh, but more importantly, where the classic Excel functions fit, because it's not just about your XLOOKUP, your stock history, your V stack. You know, that's what everyone wants to talk about and and for good reason. That that's all awesome. Uh, but there is a group of Excel functions, a special group 
that have been around like forever <laughs> i don't know when they came out it feels like forever that can also handle arrays and can handle a lot of this stuff which you know they improved as well it's not just about the new stuff we've got old stuff that got much better and doesn't get spoken about in the way that things like xlookup get spoken about like it's like the answer to everything <laughs> um in my opinion so we're going to see hopefully some cool things. Here's some pictures of books. My second book looks a bit, uh, I don't know, a bit weird, doesn't it? Um, right, I've it's completely okay. forgotten what I'm doing already. What's this next sheet do? Oh, this next sheet. I'm well, I'm well prepared, honestly. <laughs> so when I say about the old functions and how they've improved a little bit, you know, not all functions can handle this. You know, you've, you've got functions like concatenate and vlookup and, and stuff like this have like barely got any better if at all uh, as excel's grown but there's other functions like index offset sum if which you know transpose which just took another level text join because they were built to handle these arrays so when they came out you just got like a, a 2.0 version as of kind of referred to in the, the in the title uh, something to look out for when you're doing these functions uh, so for example if i was going to do a, a count ifs function just for uh, purposes of demo right now is just to note that some functions not some as in the sum uh, but some functions might use the term range so if they say the word range they can still be very useful. Uh, count ifs is going to play a role today. Um, but they're after a range. They're going to struggle with arrays and stuff. Whereas other functions, uh, such as possibly my second favourite function. Yes, we must all surely have our favourites. Of index, when a function comes up and says array, you know there's fun to be had. <laughs> this is the function that's been doing that forever and has been waiting to this moment when the dynamic arrays come out and this will just took other levels right let's see some examples and grow with it try and keep an idea eye on that chat now because it's uh kind of a little bit late notice for me i've got um kind of kids in the background as well which is distracting me uh, a bit I thought I'd set myself a challenge and I've created a tally. So anytime I make a mistake today, I'm going to add a number to that. And that means I owe Christian a beer. <laughs> so my mission is Sounds to don't good. make too many mistakes. <laughs> Sounds good for me. <laughs> so Christian's going to be willing my mistakes to happen and I will be doing my merry best to be quick and show loads of formulas and try not to uh, spend too much money <laughs> let's do this ah there he is look at him so in this first example to get the ball rolling uh, we have this table on the left hand side this table is called tbl points and you see we we have a sales team christian's part of our sales team and some other people we don't care about and they're all based in regions and they have some points and we've even got a little image function let me know in the chat have you guys played around with the image function yet oh. uh, so that image function is just pulling some images from uh, my computer gaga server so we've got christian there and a few others that are loaded uh, all coming from that name over on the right hand side our mission is to return the top five from that table and we want to return their name we want to return the points and also the photo of themselves okay. so you can see in the table on the left we have a region column that's kind of in the way so that's going to cause us a bit of an issue uh, now there are <laughs> no <laughs> That doesn't count, Mark. <laughs> I mean, formula errors. <laughs> Only formula um, error. I saw that, but uh, it doesn't count. 
Oh, Quacky, it's, it's not starting well. <laughs> um, so, uh, where, where was I? Uh, there's lots of ways of doing this, these uh, top five lists. But the way I'm going to pick here, I'm going to start off with one of the one of the great new dynamic array functions, which is the sort function. And I'm going to use this sort function on the entire table. So I'm going to build this formula up bit by bit. Yeah. Oh, that's something that you'll see in a minute. Let's just look at the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to ask it to sort by column four, which is the points column at the moment. And I'll get it to sort descending, which is minus one, as they call it. And I say I'm building this up bit by bit. So we know that the region column is involved at the moment, but we will get there. Uh, you can see it's actually returned five columns because uh, I do have a column hidden by this, this grouping at the moment, which is just kind of tucked away. Uh, but it's all part of it. So it's just been pulled in. Now, what we want to do is, obviously, first of all, I've got this in order. So we've got Christian at the top. You can see uh, Okoye is up and then uh, Captain. <laughs> America is in there. Uh, so it's in order, but I only want the top five and I only want those three columns. So the next kind of mission for us really is to get just those columns. Now, the way I want to do that here, it, once again, there's numerous ways. Um, if anyone has my advanced Excel formulas book, I'll show you. I don't know anyway, well, at least four ways <laughs> at different points to do it, whether we do choose calls, choose index. You know, there's, there's various ways that we can get these non adjacent columns. Uh, the way I'm going to go for this one is I'm going to start with another new function. Uh, it's a bit of a crazy start, really, because I said I'm going to talk about the older functions, but these are all kind of new at the moment, which is not terrible. It's just not the, the primary uh, topic right now. And I'm going to use this choose calls, which literally came out last year. Anyone been using that one? Uh, so choose calls just gave us a much easier way of choosing the columns we want rather than having to use the old school choose, which is still good. Um, or index, which would be the direct competitor to this, really, which was a bit more awkward, but much better as a function. So if choose calls, I mean, I'm nesting it in here to say, look, from that TBL points, I just want columns one. I want what do I want. I want the points columns. That's column four. And then I want the uh, photo, which is column three. I'm going to close that off. And it does mean that I need to change this sort column now because it originally said number four. But I now need to change that to number two because points is the second column of the array that's being pulled out by by choose calls. So that should result in these three being returned now, that handler non adjacent. And then we can go ahead and restrict it to only the top five by wrapping another new function from literally last year, uh, which is one called take. And I can wrap take around this and uh, tell it just to take the, the top five. So I'll close that bracket. So at the moment we're using new functions. You know, sort is what three years old, maybe. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Choose calls and take. I think we're both last year. I'm getting the, the volume of functions that came our way correct. And these are all providing an easy way that we can create this dynamic like top five list. But we want it to be more dynamic. I mean, one part of doing this, and also we've got image involved here as well, don't we? Because we've got image putting the photos in um, and they can be pulled across, which is all really, really cool for those of you who haven't used image. Look at that. Um, but there was a, a kind of fixed part of this, which was the one, four, three bit, me specifying the columns. You know, in specifying fixed areas, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes that's good. But if I do want that to be dynamic, then once again, there's different ways of doing this, but my plan is to bring in one of the older functions, which is match. Yeah. You know? oh, awesome. So, um, you know, match is a function, in my opinion, a lot of this stuff that doesn't get anywhere near the credit it gets, which is partly why I said what I said about XLOOKUP at the start. <laughs> Everyone wants to talk about index and match together, which always frustrates me. They're always used in the same sentence. Nobody talks seems to want to talk about them separately 
when independently they're both awesome but they always get squished together and go oh, index match so yeah give them some credit in their own right <laughs> so we're going to bring in match uh, in this scenario here i'm going to put in match so we can get this dynamic and i'm going to tell it to look for these headers so i'm just selecting the three headers of i2 to k2 right now comma the lookup array is going to be the headers of the table uh, for anyone who follows my content much you will know that i adore tables to uh, an embarrassing level and how easy it is just to specify i want those headers from that table because of that, that good structure we need good structure zero and i'll close it off uh yes so embedding uh match inside there we now yeah, no change to the answers but we now have that dynamic approach and one of the reasons i've done that here is that we know we have that hidden column we have this attendance as well uh, so what this means uh for us is that if i was to uh, am i getting this right <laughs> if i was to change this little drop down which is in cell j2 uh, to attendance it changes my list so I've got a little drop down here where somebody can specify if they want it ordered by points or which Christian's number one or attendance. So Christian's not number one. Christian, come on. <laughs> um, he's third. That's not too, not too bad. Um, and match play the core. Sorry, mate, what was that? You, you fixed the data before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um didn't fix the captain bit, did it? <laughs> but um, you know, match playing a key role in that dynamic approach, you know, and it's it's not one of these new funky ones, but along with the new funky ones, we we have we have something beautiful, beautiful and dynamic. Um, now I've also got this. I mean, it says total points. Don't take that too literally, because obviously I could change that to attendance. <laughs> but you get the idea of that's points. Uh, just wanted to throw this in here um, just to show index off on that note. Um, you're going to see index a few times today if uh, memory serves, maybe two or three more times. Um, but index is like, possibly the main function that took advantage of all these arrays, you know, which makes sense for anyone who, who works with computers and this kind of stuff a long time. Now we're always talking about arrays and indexes and this kind of talk an index is a function that lives off them so excel users are not always a big fan because your standard excel user looks at it and think that's difficult like column number four array but for like it folk like that's lovely <laughs> that, that is what computers do uh, so we love it like you know um One you know of excel favorites, right yeah absolutely yeah well, XLOOKUP is a function that's been sugarcoated for like an Excel person, as in like a normal person. Whereas somebody who works in computers, they index is, yeah, index is the, is the real deal, you know. Um, so in here, just for a simple example, I say simple, let's hope this works. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use index. I'm going to use it on this spill range. So if I just select Christian's name, because it's the first one, and, and throw in the hash to access the spill range. Um, I'm going to bypass the uh, the row question, uh, which is surprisingly optional. Uh, you know, it doesn't have the square brackets to indicate the optional argument, but it is as long as you provide a column or row. And for the column, I'm just going to say number two, which is the points column right now. So closing that off, an index is going to return that spill range. It's going to return that second column. And you know what's coming. To find the total, it'll just be a case of throwing a sum function around that. And obviously this could be made dynamic. I've got a fixed number two here. Now these things can be taken however you want to take them. For now, that number two will do. It's just showing index, you know, intercepting an array and taking the bits we want, or a spill range to be precise. And, and then good old sum coming in, you know, two old school functions, nothing new about these two, but, living in this modern world quite happily which is really cool oh yes right what's happening next um 
So I'm going to for me yet. <laughs> no, not 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 yet. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> if I get through this without mistake, I'll be I'll be amazed. <laughs> Random. Uh, so just popping onto another sheet. I'm going to come come back there at some point to show something. Uh, but working off that same data set, that TBL points table, let's imagine that we want to return uh, a name at random. Like for whatever reason this is, maybe this random person's going to get a, a membership to Enterprise DNA or something. This isn't a test. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so we could use maybe one of the new functions. You know, I don't have to use a new one here. We could do rand between which is easier to be honest. <laughs> but to show off the new one, let's go for rand array. Um, optional argument for, for rows there. We can see all of these uh, questions are apparently optional, square brackets around all of them. Um, I say apparently, I <laughs> probably shouldn't say that, they are optional. Um, but I'm gonna put one for the row. I just wanna return one name. Uh, I'm going to bypass the columns question. Yeah, I'm not saying that's what you should do. Like some of you might say, why don't you just put one for a column? It's like a better documented function and stuff. Yeah, you could do. I'm just going to ignore it to show you can. Uh, min will be uh, the minimum numbers number one. So I want to return a random number out of the names we've got there. The sales team of seven people. Uh, so for the max, I'm going to bring in the rows function. Got no idea when that came out, but it's not that old, not that new. Um, TBL points is the name of that table. So I want to know how many rows are there because I want it to be dynamic. I could type seven because that's how many there are, but that might change. But I know it's starting from one, but I don't know how many there are. And then I'm going to put true for the integer. So this on its own, I do like to build up functions or formulas iteratively. So, um, you know, I'm going reasonably quickly here because I want to get through lots of examples and uh, many of you on this call are probably quite familiar with a lot of formulas. Um, you know, apologies if, if you don't, this is all recorded and stuff. So it's not a, a proper training session on this where I dedicate more time, but I'm going to build them iteratively so you get a bit of an idea of how they work. Uh, this is returning number one, which is not particularly exciting, is it? Let's run that again. Oh dear, don't do that. Two. <laughs> oh, this is going great. <laughs> That'll do. But obviously we don't want row two, which is effectively what I'm, I'm getting there in a way. Uh, I want to return the person's name. So we could take that a step further with our friend index. So I could say, right, index, can you return from the TBL points table from the name column, if you don't love this element of tables, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> this makes referencing across sheets. Uh, it, the days of selecting grids it just seems so stupid in comparison. <laughs> Much easier. Um, not many people are using tables, you know. Um, still, a lot of people are not using tables. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing. It's people doing the old like, yeah, you know add up column K, why are you doing it that way? I mean, it works, it's, it's not wrong, but you know, there's no context, like what is K? Um, yeah, it's not dynamic, it's not easy to reference, but yeah, it works though, yeah, proper traditional Excel, proper spreadsheet stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm just putting in that name, comma, the uh, question for the rows now, so I've put in the array as the just TBL points name, and then what we did with the, uh, oh, I've just lost my rand array there, haven't I? It's not a mistake I've noticed. <laughs> um, we'll return the, the row number. Let me just back out and uh, throw my rand array back in. Rand array. Close bracket on the end there for index. And that returns one of our names. And it, I'm not going to worry about turning calculations off or doing any macros or, or anything like this to get this working funky. I'm, I'm just going to 
change something on a sheet to run it randomly at the moment. It's just an example. But we can see it's randomly, or as random as these functions get, uh, pulling the name out of there. Now we know that we want their photo as well. So, you know, we probably kind of know what's coming here. Uh, but we could dip back into this. And yes, we could do choose calls, you know, this other stuff we've covered a little bit so far. But I mean, index, you know, index is the best lookup function. Why would I go anywhere else? So I could click inside here, put in a comma, because we've got this column number argument waiting for us, which is exactly what choose calls is going to ask. It's going to say, give me a column number. So this one's asking now, I don't need you. Um, I could put in match, you know, the index and match dream team, which I said, you know, unfortunately sidetracks people into think they have to be together and that's all they do. Uh, and I'm going to use them together here to do what I did last time. Select the two headers. Reference the header row using some table magic. B -b 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 headers. Apologies, it's been squished into there. Uh, and close all that off and fingers crossed. Um, I've made a mistake. Last one. Hey, <laughs> I'll add that on in a sec. Let me just <laughs> figure out what I've done. If anyone knows what I've done, yell in the, the, the chat. Oh, I just saw Anna saying she's got 25 benefits using tables. Um, wait, where is it? Ref error. OK, I'm outside the ref. It's because I've got this name column over here. I need to be looking at the entire table rather than just that specific name column because I want the photo as well. Ah, where's my tally? One beer for Christian. <laughs> nice, nice icon there. <laughs> right. Uh, we'll there was a question. There was a oh, question right. from Mark. Can you do the formulas using both Microsoft 365 and Excel 2016? Um, well, um, this one. Yeah. Um, uh, Yes, but not with RAND array. You, you swap that for RAND between mm -hmm. and uh, and you'll be all right here. Yeah. I, I didn't know for sure because I'm not sure if in 2016 dynamic arrays are available. Uh, they're not. Uh, no, uh, so 2016 doesn't have the dynamic arrays, so you won't be able to use RAND array, but you can do the same thing with RAND between. Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't be able to get the image bit, because that's being used by the image function, which is extremely new, like a few weeks old. Uh, but the name part you can absolutely do with uh, the render array, like the pulling of a name, so not with render array, with render between uh, the index uh, match render array. The only difference, yes, we can't do the image, or, or not in this way, we can't. You can Google picture lookup, there are techniques, but not with this simplicity. Um, and we won't be able to get the spill range because there's no dynamic arrays, but we can do an index match and just drag it over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. you can kind of get this behavior, just not exactly the same as that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, dynamic arrays of 365, Excel for the web, and 2021 only. Cool. All right. The moral wins. OK. Um, moving on for the moment, but I'm going to come back to that top five for for something at some point. But uh, skipping across to a some example, uh, keeping on at, at, at time for Christian forget uh, density too much. Um, but we're going to see a few examples of good old sum function you know excel's number one function in you know popularity and and just generally <laughs> is it is the function we can't live without kind of thing now what i've got here is i've got a list of months and if we're eagle-eyed in fact you don't have to be because i'm going to show it um they're not words they're dates yeah so some of you may have used this technique before 
uh, I've got a list of dates, you know, 1st of Jan, 1st of Feb, 1st of March on a different sheet. Uh, date validation is running off that. But then I've done some custom formatting just to show the, the month name. So it looks like a drop down list of words, but we can see the date and you can also see it's right aligned, which you know, it doesn't mean it's a number, but a strong clue that that was numeric. Um, and that's important for the calculation we're going to do, because many of you may know that there is a function called sum product. Uh, this is a function that's you know, not new. And some product, especially in the past, more so than now, um, was a favourite for many people who did advanced Excel stuff because it gave us the ability to handle arrays natively before the advent of dynamic arrays. So it was great for doing some powerful calculations, especially long, long ago, like pre sum ifs and all that stuff as well, which we are talking a long time ago. <laughs> We're going 15 plus years for that. But um, yeah, it's, it's always been a, a dream function. But in the 365 world, for those who are in 365, it's pretty much dead. <laughs> the, the only reason we need some product is backwards compatibility now. You know, it's pretty much in the list with the likes of lookup and concatenate, which are, I mean, they're pointless really, that they're nice to have, but they don't offer anything that I can't get from something else. So, but the reason people would use it here is because we need to handle an array. Um, because I would like to to do a uh, a month function because I would like to extract the month from uh, this date here, and I want to test if it's equal to uh, a month that's in. Uh, I've got a data sheet at the bottom that's got a list of cells and a date column, and I'm assuming it's called. What is it called? I don't know what it's called. Uh, let's go select it. And I'm going to pop over to data, gives us a chance to see it as well. And I'm going to select this date column. It's called TBL sales. That's what it's called. So I can see at the top, you know, writing in the reference. So I couldn't remember what I'd uh, called it. But this month function, you know, I'm referencing the whole column here. So that's going to return an array of all of the answers. Um, so let's imagine we're testing February. You know, it's going to say no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> As it goes through and goes right, Jan's wrong, 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 February. Yeah. And it's going to return this array of all the trues and falses. And I want to test the month of that single cell, that like scalar value against this like array of values. And without some product, especially in the past, you, you couldn't do this kind of stuff. Some ifs can't do this kind of game. And what I'm going to do is just multiply that by another array, which is going to be the totals. So I want to return the, you know, the sum of the sales from a given month, which is coming from that drop down. Two close. Uh, oh my gosh, B number two. <laughs> <laughs> Need another bracket. I should have known that. How should I have known Excel people? Because that bracket is red and not black. The last bracket will always be black. So this is what happens when you do Excel at the end of the day. That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> oh gosh, scan on now. Uh, let's change uh, August, see what we've got. Oh, we're not getting anything now, what have I done now? This is going beautifully well. Bracket should be here. We'll keep it to only one. Um, put a bracket in the wrong place, bracket should be there. See if anybody wrote anything. <laughs> yeah, let's get this thing. <laughs> I think Christian should be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so this is return the answer. You know, it's not the prettiest function for people who haven't done this stuff before. And there's lots of ways around this. You know, multiplying the arrays. People can do like n functions and the the double unary, the two like minus signs. But this is an approach, and this is using some product, which is you know, lovely jubbly, like some products are amazing. It's, it's doing a job and this drop down will run off it. Um, but we don't don't need that. I should be able to take out the product word 
uh, and just use good old sum. No, no need for sum product. Uh, because the array engine came under the hood, uh, sum can do everything sum product can do. Um, rendering sum product, um, unfortunately, on the unfortunately for people like Liam Bashtick, uh, on yeah. the, the scrap heap. <laughs> I, I was thinking of Liam and Tim. Yeah. Um, so obviously it's still great, especially for people who use an Excel 2016 and, and stuff we spoke about before. So I joke around, it's not completely useless because it's backwards compatible, but in the 365 world, it doesn't offer anything, N nothing new, unless you just like it, which is fair enough. But some has, has kind of surpassed it and some can handle arrays, no need for some product because of the engine. It's not just about the dynamic arrays, it's about what they did to the engine. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, and on that note, I might just do one more example here because I can always come back to it if need be. But I've got some example here where um, I want to do a two way sum. So I've got a drop down list of products in column E and a drop down list of uh, cities in you know, cell C2, but along that header row there. And I want to sum the, you know, the appropriate ones for the given product. So if it's cake, you know, all, all these guys for the. And so on for the relevant city. Now. You know, if I didn't have to worry about the city or, or let's just talk about Lisbon at the moment, you know, I could do a sum ifs and I can tell it to some like Lisbon range. So obviously this is not dynamic. I'm, I'm selecting it manually right now. Uh, we'll make it dynamic. The criteria range is the products. You know, classic sum ifs. We all probably know this. Uh, no offense if you don't. Don't put a P on there. Um, and that will happily do its job. I just realised I've got to go and add to that tally. I've forgotten. I'll do that in a minute. Um, I'm not forgetting it. <laughs> Christian's making his own tally chart. Exactly. <laughs> On the uh, wall. And that returns. Sorry. And, and that returns Lisbon great. And obviously this bit will be dynamic because some of us can handle that. But it's not going to, on its own, dynamically find that that correct column. Now, a way around this, if you want to do some ifs and I would not be against this because I think this is easier than what I'm going to show second. So personally, I would probably do it this way, especially in 365. But instead of telling it the column to use uh, in this like, I was going to say absolute, but obviously there's no dollars, but you know what I mean, like explicit manner. Um, we could throw in XLOOKUP. So I've kind of moaned about it a bit just because there's so much for all. It, uh, funny, a bit overwhelming. <laughs> um, but uh, I could use this to say, right, can you look for um, whatever selected in there, cell C2, so Lisbon at the moment. Can you look along the header row? I'm just going to select the whole thing. I didn't need to select product a month, but for simplicity, I'll just say everything. Um, what is important is that I make this next bit match. So if I'm selecting all of them, I better make sure I select the same width here. You know, it's got to be in uh, proportion. And I'm going to get XLOOKUP to return the values for me because XLOOKUP on its own is going to look for that that Lisbon across the header row and it's going to return the values. So running it on its own, you can see it returns numbers that relate to Lisbon. You know, if you look at the ones at the bottom, like the 5625159590, then you can you can make out that they belong, you know, these are these guys here. You know, so it is picking out the, the Lisbon ones successfully and it's running off that drop down value. So it's, you know, it's looking up the column, uh, giving us that dynamic nature. So if I just uh, undo that array and run it, and I know that if I change Lisbon as well, I've got this two way lookup. So some ifs, obviously introduced in 2007, been around a long time, uh, and X lookup, one of the great new functions working together, you know, to make this happen. And that, that would be the easiest way or, or one of the easier ways of doing that stuff. It's not alone, you know, filter can do things like this and stuff. Um, but although it's a bit more complicated, um, we could even do stuff like this, you know, with just some on its own. Um, so if I try and take a, a bunch of this stuff out, 
uh, I should be able to build in some arrays and say, OK, if. Uh, uh, what am I doing? If C2. <laughs> it's equal to. Um, I'm just going to select these four here, these guys here. Uh, multiplied by a second array, which I'm going to say if the fruit product is equal to this column here. Multiplied by the array of all these numbers. Uh, two close brackets. Um, and maybe I should have kept the last one to compare the answers, but here's some doing it all on its own. Looks like uh, some product here. Absolutely. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so some product can do that, which is partly why it was such an awesome function, especially in years gone by, and, and certain Excel people would rave about it and you'd ask them, what's your favourite function? They go, some product. <laughs> you know, for a lot of people that was their favourite, whereas in modern Excel it's it's probably not because because some has now kind of stepped up and can do it on its own, whereas going back a few years it couldn't. Obviously you can do like the, the CSC, the control shift enter and stuff, but yeah. They were awkward, they were horrible. So the newest one is calculate, probably. Yeah. Indeed. I don't know how the raffle's going. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying I would do it that way because the previous way was easier, wasn't it? Some ifs and next look up. There's no need to overcomplicate it unless you're trying to impress someone. It's really just to get an idea of, you know, what's going on underneath the bonnet and, and what's possible. Um, now, I'm just going to go and add to that tally. I, I didn't count how many it was. I think it was, there were two mistakes. So I'm going to change it to three. No, no, no. Leave it to two. It's OK. I, I, I'm counting only one there. Oh, damn you. <laughs> I'll, I'll drink them for you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, but I just want to return back to the uh, the top five rankings to try and do something a little bit different again, hopefully. So what I have is um, on my Power BI service, uh, this um, this list of sales team, you know, Christian and Black Widow and Gamora, etc. Uh, I have as a featured table, uh, an organizational data type. You know, don't know when that came out, whenever it was, but a pretty new feature, modern Excel, Know, using the cloud, using the service, all that stuff, data types. Um, so if I select the names of people in my table, uh, Christian down to Iron Man here, and if I go to my data tab, um, I should see that the featured data type is shown. You know, I have this sales rep, uh, create in Power BI feature table, load it up uh, to the service, and it's available in Excel. So if I click on sales reps, uh, that should come on, convert them <laughs> into a data type. Oh, come on, man. Just, oh, why do that to me? Why are some of them working and some not? Um, you see this one's working. Oh, picture's not working. Why, 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 why are some working and some not? OK, but hopefully we get the idea and I'll try and persevere with this. Yeah, but for this one, you need to have a Power BI Pro license, right? I believe so, yeah. Oh, that's it was working earlier for me. Um, but anyway, I've got these data types. You can kind of see them working because I can see it with the others. If I put in Gamora and stuff. And let's try and persevere and see how far we can get. Um, and I've just got a little bit of information in the table. Uh, I've asked them what their favourite function is. Gamora says the function is, is her favourite. And she's achieved just shy of 9,000 on sales. You can see it's pulling it from uh, my management team workspace here. And you can see when I tested it out as well a few hours ago, it was working. Mm -hmm. um, working perfectly. So I've got these data types. They can come from Power Query. They could be, what do you call them? But the ones you get in Excel. Um, I've got some Power BI ones. And if I want to do a test, so we've seen that part of the information we're capturing 
is we're capturing what their favorite function is. So a query's favorite function is count ifs. And maybe for some reason, I want to do an if function, yeah, old school function, one of the best. And I just want to know if their favorite function is sum, then the answer is correct. If their favorite function is not sum, they're wrong. Because <laughs> the best <laughs> function in Excel is sum. Don't take my words too much. Right? Um, so over here, I could put an if function in. And it wants that logical test, you know, good old if, but I want to test a data type, which <laughs> we'll see what success we get with Christian. because I've got a little question mark there. Um, Start with Okoye, just to make sure. Say again, sorry. Start with Okoye, just to make sure it works. Yeah, look at Duke and I. It's going to be it. So I'll do this if, and um, because I want to pull a value from a data type field, uh, I'm going to use a function called field value. Uh, so as its name says, extracts a value from the field of a record. So it allows us to access information in data types, but all the data types, Power Query data types, feature tables, the different types, um, and allows us to test them, sum them, X look up them, yeah, formulas, basically. So using the if function as an example here within this table, it asks me for um, the value and then the field name. So I want to ask that a value is uh, this cell. So this is the cell that's got the uh, uh, the data type in it, comma, and then what is the field name? And we have to put that in, in quotes, I believe, if we're typing it. And the field name is called fave function. So that would extract the, the information from that record and from that field. And I'll contest if it's equal to sum. Obviously, don't need the capitals there. And if it is, I'll say it's correct. And if it isn't, I'll say that the answer is wrong. So get the field errors at the moment. I say at the moment, I'm hoping it will <laughs> somehow correct itself magically. Um, and unfortunately, none of the ones who said sum have, have come through, so they all look wrong. Ah, uh, what would you know? The formula is working. So it's yeah, okay. but the formula is working. Yeah, there were there were a couple who uh, who did say uh, sum. And can um, reference can you reference a value uh, using the table name column and dot uh, the parameter? Mm. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do. But depending on the formula, we can do stuff like that. And we can also um, we can also use our field value. So I don't know how this is going to work out because of the problems we've got. Um, but one of the reasons I waited till now to come back to it is because I want us to do an example, which is probably not going to work now, of um, like the total points, uh, but only for like a certain function. Uh, so those errors are probably probably going to break it. But um, one of these people said um, count ifs, didn't they? So if I if I was going to do a sum function, I should be able to to test a field value. I could say the field value of of uh, that column. I think I have to reference. Just checking some notes. I've got this one. I don't do this kind of stuff every day. Uh, the column is five function. And we want to know it's equal to, uh, let's say, count ifs, because we know that's one that's showing up. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Close bracket multiplied by the points column. So I'm doing a sum similar to what I was just doing, which is why well, I wanted to circle back and do those examples first before I did one on the data type. Uh, two close brackets. Uh, so doing the array work again, but field values in there to extract the information from a data type. That's the only real difference to what I was doing on the, the prior examples. And yes, because I've got a field errors. Fortunately, that's not playing games. Um, never mind. <laughs> Take my word. We'll keep that there just in case this kicks in and works. 
is it working uh, if you put an uh, aggregate and uh, check if you have an error or not? Uh, Probably, but uh, it's uh, complicating too much the formula. Yeah, to see if we can avoid the errors. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure that would. You know. OK, never mind. It's a bit of a shame that. Uh, I'll keep it there just in case. It's Power um, BI here. Power BI fault. Not yeah, formula. let's blame Power BI. <laughs> don't, don't blame Excel. <laughs> so then some, some of it will work in there. But um, yeah, talking about Power BI, let, let's try and uh, come back and give Power BI some credit. So I'll leave that there and see if it works. But something I, I literally use for the first time today um, to try and show some modern stuff as well is uh, some recent news, like literally 20th of January, that um, you can have connected Excel tables. So we can go into Power BI and we can export data, uh, summarize data into Excel, but as a table. So it doesn't force you into a pivot table, like things like analyze in Excel does and stuff. Uh, we can put it in a normal table. Um, and because this session's on formulas, I thought, yeah, maybe I should show that. So I don't know how useful this is. And I've, I literally used it for like 10 minutes earlier today for the first ever time. <laughs> so don't ask me any questions on it, please. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the blog literally from a few days ago, just telling people kind of how we can do this, this new feature that just shows the, the relationship between Excel and Power BI just getting stronger and stronger. And whether this is useful or not, I don't really know. I mean, I'm not particularly amazed by it. I just saw, oh, we could use that with formulas, but it does show that that relationship getting stronger, um, which is good. We've got so many ways of using the two, you know, feature tables, analyzing Excel, you know, all this kind of stuff, uh, working off data sets. Um, yes, where was I going? Yes, yeah, so if I did go to my um, Power BI, and if I opened up, a report. Um, if I open up this report here, I've got a lot of reports with a similar name, so I hope this, this works. Um, then I could go to the little ellipsis in the top right. And we get the opportunity, which you know some of you may know, you know, this uh, a Power BI group as much as Excel, uh, that we can export data. You know, whether that's good or bad is a, a bit of a controversial subject at times. But working with the idea that it's good, that I can do that, I can click on export data from that visual. And we get this opportunity to summarize for summarize data, which at the moment is capped at 500,000 row max. This data is about 10 rows, so that's, that's no problem. And if I click export, it generates a new file. So I'm going to wait for that to do that. Come on, Power BI, don't let me down. Well, the 10 rows uh, <laughs> looks a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the gauges, doesn't it? Let's blame Teams for that one. Um, so I'm just opening it now. Here it comes. You know, Microsoft have to do the verification, don't they? It sh shouldn't take too long. And then I'll have to enable it. Yeah, all typical security stuff. Mm -mm -mm. And I'll probably use just one quick example after this. Just see that we've just gone past six o'clock my time. Okay, enable editing. And that yeah. should pull in the summarized data behind it. Um, so here it's pulled in that summarized data, you know, behind that visual, that stacked bar chart. And it's in just a normal table. You know, so anything we know, you know, I can go and format them. Whoops. I can select that column and just do, you know, normal formatting, nothing special here, typical Excel. You know, I can create my own chart in Excel, which gives you a bit more versatility than Power BI. You know, Power BI visuals are much richer, uh, powerful filtering, but Excel ones are a bit more flexible when it comes to like changing labels and it's much easier. Um, and maybe you've just got somebody who says, oh, I want an Excel report. I hate Power BI. It's OK, I'll, I'll throw it into there and give you this. And, um, but it also means that obviously we can and do a formulas. For, so just for a simple example, I'll just sum the like total revenue for, for the sake of a, a simple demo. 
uh, and obviously get like a normal sum, nothing, nothing surprising there. Yeah, same. Um, but uh, fingers crossed if I'm not pushing this too far. Um, I just pulled it off that screen for a second. Um, if I make a change, as a, a famous artist once said, let's do you two. Breaking ground, breaking news, and a few days old, this feature. Ropug, Romania. <laughs> Bringing the latest features to your house or wherever you are watching this presentation. <laughs> right, here we go. The blog post, <laughs> so it's uh, really cool and new for me too. I missed it. Cool. So I'm hopefully this will refresh this data set. I really am testing the ground here. Come on, you can refresh. Be good to me. Now refresh is working. Should have made a mental note of what that number was before I did this. Yeah, it did right, refresh. Awesome. Cool. For anyone who, who didn't notice, we can see the times updated in here. So we've got that refresh going on. Um, yeah, I don't know if you made a mental note. You can see it on the recording. Watch this back if you doubt it. <laughs> um, I can refresh this. Obviously, this can be automated, you know, scheduled refreshes, and you can set timers in here. And you saw the table grow. That's what you saw there. <laughs> so I hit refresh, and it's all updates. Yeah, so we've got that link to the the data set on the service um including yeah. the formula you did cool yeah absolutely cool so we can get uh data from power bi report into like a, a normal table uh, and it's not always a pivot table now which which obviously opens up our formulas and being that that's the topic of the session i thought oh that you know that that would make sense to as something to demo uh something modern with some <laughs> something old and great um how are we doing time christian i don't know how long how long do people normally talk on your stuff normally it's a uh, one hour one hour 15 so if you have uh, one more example we are uh, here to uh, see it and cool. then uh, we should run the enterprise dna raffle where we already have 10 participants so yeah. really high high chances of uh, winning yeah good stuff um right here i have an example of you know i want to know uh, what the most uh, frequently occurring pizza is you know pe people are ordering pizza each week and i want to know which ones are the most frequently occurring um there's a function in excel called mode dot malt which is it's not massively new in itself to be honest uh maybe 2016 something like that maybe i'm, I'm guessing um you know which, which finds the most frequently occurring uh, but it only works with numbers you know so it doesn't work on the pizza's name you know it's going to throw up an error but it does work on a numeric column like the week numbers which you can see are right aligned it's a bit of formatting again it is a number and it will happily say oh you know week number three is the one that's occurred uh, the most. There's there's much more of them there. That's the one that frequently occurs most. But but I want to know the pizza that chooses the most, and it doesn't do that. So we're going to do our own one. And building this up reasonably quickly, because I'm wary of time. I've got to take my Twitter scouts off this. Doesn't stop. And um, count ifs, awesome function. One of my favourites again. Count ifs, so awesome. Um, I've got videos where I show like numerous examples of that, <laughs> of what it can do. Um, but I just want to test the, pick up the speed a bit of the pizza's names, comma, pizza's names. So I want to know how many times do they occur in this list? And because we've got dynamic arrays, although this feature, sorry, this function precedes the dynamic array era, um, it will spill. They will say, oh, you know, this pizza's in there four times and this one's in there twice and, and so on. It's OK. Cool. But that's not really what I want. I want the name of the pizza. Now, 
I also want to know the one that's most occurring, not just how many times you all occurred. So next iteration, I guess, is to wrap the max around it, you know, to find the biggest number, the one that occurred the most. And it says the one that occurred the most is four. Four times is the largest occurrence. So, OK. But we need to know what it's called, you know. So next iteration. We, we could tidy up, up this formula. It's going to get big, but I'm going to focus on the formula. Apologies if it's messy. Well, no, if apologies, it will be messy. Um, another count ifs. I'm going to put that logical expression. You know, is it equal to? And we're going to test the occurrences. You know, that array that we saw a moment ago that was spilled to the sheet. Uh, we're going to test that. So now we get some true falses. We've got some logical work coming out. So I now know that Hawaiian was one of them and Margarita is also one. We've got a conflict. We've got a clash. But I don't want this. So then we bring in a new function. We think, hey, there's a new function called filter. And that filters a list. And that's what I want. I want to filter it for the trues. So let's do filter on those pizza names. And the argument is these count ifs. Ah, now we're talking. Now we've got those names that are the most frequently occurring. But I don't want them a million times, do I? So let's wrap another new one in there. Let's bring Unique to the party. Unique will strip out the uh, duplicates. I told you it was going to get messy. I'm going off screen. No, no tidy DAC stuff going on right now. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, formatting. Use format <laughs> DAX formatter. Yeah, I'm not surprised you'd think of that. Um, obviously, Excel's formula bar is is a, a shocker. Um, some of you may know that there's the advanced formula environment, uh, which we could do this in and that will be tidier. I just don't want to open up uh, more avenues and kind of overcomplicate this right now. But if we're doing this properly, we'll definitely write it neater than this shenanigans. Um, but we can break this up onto multiple lines and the advanced formula environment would, would make it look better. Um, but rather than having them in this like spill right now, uh, the final one to add to this really is I'm going to bring in uh, uh, text join. I nearly said text split there by mistake. Uh, the delimiter. Now we could put in a boring delimiter like a comma space. Pretty classic. It's good. But why would you do that when we live in a world of lovely little icons? Uh, so doing the windows and period, like you know, on a Windows machine, I can't speak for yeah, non-Microsoft stuff and that. Um, but, uh, windows period, that will pop up uh, a nice little emoji keyboard here. And I could do a little search for pizza. So oh, look at that little pizza slice. Let's have that as a delimiter. That would be nice. Do I have a space just before that? I do. I don't want that. Um, comma, don't worry about the true stuff. Oh, sorry, the uh, the blanks. Uh, close bracket on the end. And that should join it together so that we get all our frequently occurring pizzas and they'll be delimited by a pizza. And obviously this formula is I don't know what formulas you guys have all written before. It's you know, it's not that bad, uh, but it's probably the biggest one of this session so far. And we could definitely improve it with the advanced formula environment to write it. We could also improve it with the let function. You know, we wrote count ifs twice there, the same function twice. And it was mentioned in the chat, we could a billion percent convert it into a lambda. <laughs> you know, if I've got people who need to use this, then I could just have a lambda that asks them what delimiter do you want and where's the column? And as easy as that, th this would be underway. Obviously, the topic of this presentation was about the old school, you know, text join, I think came out in 16, 16 or 19, count is 2007, you know, max, like forever. You know, we've got the old and the new working together. You know, we've got the emoji keyboard. That's quite a modern thing. We've got filter, dynamic array function, proper dynamic array function. 
but we've also got functions helping out here with that new and it's just let's not forget about them <laughs> and just do all the new stuff uh, they're great as well and together it's all awesome no it still doesn't work <laughs> refresh um never mind so yeah i mean obviously any questions feel free uh, I, I know we're coming near the end and we've got the the raf one stuff to do you know these are my details uh if you liked all this formula stuff i've got a whole book on it just google advanced excel formulas uh, and feel free to check me out and attend romania uh, power user group events every month come and see chandu next month i don't know who chandu Andy is said but, uh, london meetup yeah, so, <laughs> it's really good. Alan is doing uh, Excel London meetup since uh, years now, and uh, in February he's co-organizing. Um, how is it mm. the the official name, the, Alan? The Global Excel Summit. Global Global Excel Summit. So uh, I will uh, post a link after the the session on uh, Global Excel Summit, uh, and. Um, Feel free to to register there. It will be at the at the beginning of uh, February, from sixth of February, I think, right? I think so. Yeah, sixth to ninth, I think. The top of the head. Uh, I don't see any additional uh, uh, questions in the chat. Thank you, Alan, for a, a great uh, presentation. I learned a lot, awesome. even the uh, the new announcement that uh, Excel can be connected to tables with Power BI. I missed it. I was uh, out of office and uh, out of range for the last yeah. week. So uh, I love it. I I'm learning yeah. something new. Yeah, and I see um, uh, Anna Corinne has mentioned about, you know, you can't do all charts off pivot tables. So you know, that's an advantage of getting it into a normal table. Uh -huh. Another advantage. Uh, Congrats on uh, your speaking this year. So you are the our first speaker, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks yeah. again for for coming, and uh, feel free to stay if you have time. Because after the raffle, I will stop the recording, and uh, we can stay a bit for uh, chit chat and uh, open sure. the videos and uh, everything else. Thank you all for joining, and uh, thanks again, Alan, for uh, accepting the challenge to in uh, such a short notice. Uh, you saved me and uh, looking forward to have you again as a speaker at Romania Power BI user group. And uh, for everyone else, uh, feel free to join our next meetups, starting with the one in February with Chandu. Thank you.